So let's have a look at our previous algorithm for starting a car and think about if this is a good description for an algorithm or not. This is normally again group work. So now again use Teams please to exchange information and have a chat with your colleagues if you watch it during the prescribed hours. So how can we proceed here? Again, we should check if this algorithm meets the requirements of an algorithm, which is the definiteness, effectiveness, and finiteness. So we can go step by step through the algorithm and again answer, is the step precisely defined? Is it basic enough and can be executed? And does this overall algorithm terminate? And again, you can answer for yourself the question if this algorithm is understandable for you or, and if you would be able to execute it. Think a little bit already about this question, how would you define understandability in this context? So take two minutes at least to think about it and, I, and pause now the video. So now we will have a look at some thoughts that I have for this algorithm. Firstly, when you look at this algorithm, it doesn't necessarily terminate. Well, for instance, what happens if the engine is broken? Well, as we iterate through this um, condition here, while the engine hasn't started, we repeat over and over this again and again. Well, we would never end if the engine will never start. So that means this algorithm has a flaw. And I suppose in real world, you would kind of behave slightly different. You would try the algorithm a couple of times. And if it doesn't start, you call the garage, right? But that means this algorithm is flawed and you should fix it. So I hope you understand why finiteness is really important now. Because, well, if we implement such an algorithm, particularly and you give it to someone or a machine that needs to execute it, you, you want to get an answer and you don't want to wait forever because it basically doesn't work. So how can you change this algorithm to make it work? Maybe it may becomes a bit more complicated then. And also it would be useful probably to add a description. So what is this problem about? So what is this algorithm about? Making a car ready to drive maybe and define the input and the output clearly. So we have as input the key and the car and as output we have an ignited car. Well, started car. Well, otherwise it appears basically very easy to understand. So there are additional problems to it. What does it mean to hold a key in start position versus turning a key to an on position? Right, what does this mean? Secondly, we saw here, if six seconds have passed, well, basically this condition is, is always true. So this is not really a condition. You should just have said here, wait for six seconds as the next step, and then you should check, is the car started? And if not, you know, we turn it to the off position, wait for 10 seconds and turn it to the on position again. We also see that there is some inconsistency because he says here hold key in start position versus turning key to off or on position. What's the difference? So it's a bit ambivalent, right? So can we fix this algorithm? Maybe you can think about it a little bit to write down an algorithm that would be able to start the car. Here is one opportunity um, that we can take how we can start a car with an algorithm that I have quickly sketched. So algorithm start car, we remember a number which we call tries. And as long as the car is off, we increment the number of tries. Then we turn the key to an on position. We wait for two seconds, sleeping two seconds. And then if the car is off and tries is bigger than three, then we say, well, it's that gym. Please call a mechanic. Otherwise, we would basically um, continue with this loop. So that means, let's check this out, this algorithm. So let's say at beginning, tries is zero, the car is off. This is what we assume the car is at the beginning, right? But even if it would be turned on, our algorithm would guarantee that the car at the end of the algorithm, it is ignited, right? which is what we said here. Input is a key or 
and the car and the output is an ignited car. It doesn't say here that the car has to be turned off. It says it's just the car. So even if it was ignited, it will still be ignited afterwards, right? Because we check, is the car off here? It's not off. Then we finish with the iteration and we are done. Let's assume the car is off initially, right? So we set tries to tries plus one. And this is not equal in terms of mathematical sense. It means you take this value here on the right hand side, you, you um, insert this value of this variable, which is zero at the beginning, you add one, which makes it to one. Now tries is one. We turn the key to one position, we sleep for two seconds. And now let's assume our car remains off. Well, tries at this point isn't three, it's actually one. So we wouldn't go to this condition. We start go back to our while loop, which iterates again. The car is still off. We set tries to two. We try it again. And now the car is still off. We would go back again. Tries become three. And after we try it for the fourth time and the car would still be off, then we would print this message. But of course, if at any time the cars get started, then we would at this point, when we check is the car off, we would exit this iteration and then uh, our car is turned on as the algorithm promises. So let's talk a little bit about definiteness, which basically means how to design a good description. As I said, documenting an algorithm serves the purpose to communicate because what you need, why do we need to communicate? You, you want to enable someone else to implement the algorithm such that it can be executed. So, and there are a couple of properties uh, that we can associate with an algorithm that has a good description. It should be analyzable. That means you can analyze this text in a more formal sense. It should be understandable for the target audience, for example, which is CS, computer science students, or it could be in terms of a cookbook, it could be um, chefs, right? Um, it should have an unambiguous description, which was our definiteness, right? So how can we achieve a good description of an algorithm? Well, this is just a very small introduction. First of all, you need to define the terms used. You should clarify the purpose, the input and output. You should add natural language to describe in prosa how the algorithm work. Then you should be consistent with the terms for sequence, iteration and selection, right? For our concepts, you should use some kind of pseudocode and you should take them in a consistent way. For each step, make sure that it's clear what it does and how it works and wor check does it work for all the possible inputs. And also handle errors, right? What happens if the car is already turned on? It hopefully shouldn't explode. Otherwise you would have written a really a bad manual. Okay, another way of uh, describing an algorithm is in a graphical representation and flowcharts is a visual representation of an algorithm that is really an alternative to pseudocode and it serves the purpose of communication. They are well defined and standardized and they use easy to understand symbols to represent the steps. Here are the symbols def uh, defined. So we basically have arrows which defines the control for, so do this and then do that. What on the right hand side is on the arrow. We have processes, we have a little bit of input output and our decision making construct which was selection, right? And we have a start and end. Let's go into an example because it's a bit dry to go into all this simple. So let's see a, a simple sequence that we write a pseudocode, read the user input, do something, then do something else, and then we show the result on a screen. That is typically a representation of a lot of programs, right? Very basic, and you can always start with something as basic as that and refine it. So we start here, which was basically our terminator symbol. It's also used for the start symbol. We read the user input, it uses this diagonal symbol. And then we do something, we do something else, we show the result on screen and we end. Okay, so that's basically a one to -on one representation. No big deal. So for selection, here we have um, if the test is satisfied as pseudocode, we do something else. It means the test is not satisfied, do something else. So here we get to our um, decision making construct, which is here the diamond. So we do a test and if the test is true, we do something, right? And if it's false, we do something else. 
So you can follow from here, depending on the outcome, the correct arrow, and then you do this action, and then you go back here, and here we have this little connector symbol, which means two the path joins together for multiple uh, steps, right? Those two steps both end, come together here and end in show, re show the result on the screen. Okay, that's nice. And how does it look for iteration? Well, there is no specific symbol for iteration, in fact, necessary, because an iteration means to repeat a sequence based on a condition. Okay, so here we can say we have an iteration while a test is true, we do something, okay? While the weather is sunny, they go outside and get a nice sun bath, right? Okay, so basically we start here, we go here, we get do the test, and while the weather is sunny, we do something, go outside for example, we go back, we go back to the test. Is it still sunny? Yes, it is, we do something, right? And so on and so forth. At some point it's not sunny anymore in this example, well, we do something else, for example, we're getting inside, um, take a shower, I don't know, and then we show the result on the screen, well, for a computer program. Now let's have a look at our example, starting a car. Um, starting, insert a key, turn key to start position, we go here, look that here, this is the end, it's a connector, but here we, it feeds in um, from another step, so we cannot follow um, this incoming arc, we can only follow the outgoing arc of a connector. Has the engine started? Yes, we are done, right? But if it hasn't, then we hold the key in the start position, then we check, you know, this was the original algorithm, we check that seconds has passed, and so on and so forth. So we can follow this algorithm, and this is a way of formulating the algorithm uh, without using pseudocode, while I still believe it has some merit to flowcharts.